and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Haley and I do reviews for uh, Christian books, Christian fiction, classics, um, really anything that I enjoy reading. And my goal here is to give you a Christian perspective, a biblical counselor's perspective, and also content warnings on all the books that I read. And today's video is going to be a recap of everything that I read in June. Now, if you watched my last video, you know that I promised you a thousand subscribers Q&A and giveaway. And unfortunately, I have been really lazy and have not done that video. And well, actually, I did film it after being lazy for a long time. And then I went to go edit it and it had horrible background noise and did not sound good at all. So I need to refilm it. I should be refilming it right now. But again, I just don't want to. I have no motivation to do that. So enjoy this video. And then the next one that I post will be the Q&A. And hopefully I can get that out in a week because it's really embarrassing that I've only been posting like two videos a month. So that's enough talk about other videos. This video is the June recap, like I said, and we're going to go over all the books that I read in the month of June. It actually was a fairly good month. I am five books ahead of schedule on my goal for this year. So that's pretty great. This month, I actually did a lot of Kindle reading. So I only have one actual print book that I read. All the rest were Kindle and audiobooks. I also was sick for a couple days, so I read a lot during that time. So in total, I read nine books and 3,415 pages. So a pretty good month right on track. All right, um, all the books that I read. First, I read Stars Collide by Janice Thompson. This is number one in the Backstage Pass series. This is one of Lindsay's favorite authors, favorite books, I think, from that author. And I was really excited to try it out. There actually were a lot of things I really enjoyed in this book, but I only ended up giving it three stars um, for various reasons. But first of all, what I enjoyed. I actually did really enjoy it in the beginning. I have really strong a setting in the beginning. I liked the... The setting of Hollywood but being Christian it kind of reminded me of Behind the Act which if you've been around for a lot of my videos you know that's one of my favorite um, contemporary books so this kind of reminded me of that. I did really enjoy the characters they were fun and some of the relationships were really cute and one thing that I really loved which was kind of one of the points of the book was all of the old movie references from like the 30s to like the 60s. Um, they quoted a lot of movies throughout and her grandma it was like a star from that time period. And so you had those flashbacks. I thought that was really cool, even though I've only seen a few of the movies in there. So I wish I had like written out a list of all the ones that were referenced so I could go watch them because I do like watching old movies. And then the storyline was of these people working on like a TV show and and the dynamics, I think, between the cast and the crew reminded me a lot of what I've heard about like Full House and how they were really good friends all together because they worked on that show for so long. Um, so that's kind of what I was feeling as I was reading this book. However, I got really annoyed because of all of the bad theology and psychology in there. You know, sometimes you read a Christian fiction book and it's really like, it's really under the surface. It's not a big deal even when you do run into bad theology. But here I felt like a lot of just the whole point of like where the plot line was going and everything related to this psychology that was in there. So even though I don't expect to agree with all theology in a book of course and when it's blatantly in your face it's just hard to get past that when I'm reading a book and there's just a lot of like you're not responsible for what happens in your life at all even like your responses if someone's mean to you then of course you had no choice but to be angry which I very much disagree with that and then there was one quote where it said that god will not violate your free will which i definitely disagree with that so those things just really got on my nerves as i was reading through this and there was a lot of like character development throughout of these these characters especially if there's this really bratty child and everyone was really annoyed with her but then when they learned that like her parents had been divorced they didn't just feel compassion for her they just completely ignored the fact that she had a bad attitude and it, completely excused it after that so it was really sad overall it was a fun clean story but just the theology really took down those two stars I wouldn't be opposed to reading other books by this author this one was just not my favorite and I, I would hope that some of her other books um, I like better and then the second book I read was The Elusive Truth of Lily Temple by Joanna Davidson Politano this is a newer book by this author I have read a couple of other ones by her I ended up giving it three stars it was very confusing throughout, which I feel like a lot of this author's books are. I did I did like the last like quarter of it, but the rest of it was just too long. And it was very reflective and emotional. And I know a lot of that I think has to do with the narrator and how they're presenting it. But you know, sometimes a book can just be written so emotionally and like everything is just so dramatic instead of actually just 
going through and dealing with the problems. So I did think that it was neat, like that the story was kind of inspired by Tale of Two Cities, which I did happen to read this year, but did not pay attention to like anything I read. I only caught like the ending of it. Um, but it was cool, like as I was reading this one, how Politano really summarized the whole plot of the Tale of Two Cities for me. So that was really helpful because now I feel like I have a better understanding of the Tale of Two Cities. But obviously Dickens did it better in this book. I did not enjoy that much. So I won't say that it's a bad book if this is your thing, but it just was too dramatic for me. And I think after reading, I think three of this author's books and giving them all around like three stars, it wasn't the best. And I don't think I'll be reading any more of her stuff. And then I listened to The Empire of Pain, The Secret History of the Sackler Dynasty by Patrick Radden Keefe. And I actually ended up giving this four stars. Now, hear me out. This book actually took me months to listen to because I think it was an 18 hour audiobook and it ended up getting returned to my library and then that library card wouldn't work anymore and then there were other people on the wait list so I had to wait a long time to recheck it out and finish it. But I really love just learning so much in this book and I have referred back to it so many times. Is it the best book ever? No. Would I read it in print? Probably not. There was there a lot of language in there? Yes, because it was a... Um, a what do you call it like a, not a biography but it's it's modern like this stuff goes up to like 2020 and so there's a lot of transcripts of like court cases and different things and there was a lot of language in there but it was so neat just seeing all these different things in the medical community and how medication became such a big deal and um, the, it being advertised to the consumers and then how the oxycontin morphine addiction turn, like fed the heroin craze in the 2000s it was crazy um and just learning about like that no one's warned of the side effects and that the fda just really doesn't care they all get paid off basically to approve things and then seeing like how certain states had less of an opioid epidemic than others it was just so interesting and like I said I've told so many different people about it beware that when you hit about halfway there is a lot of very strong language like I said it was actual conversations that were ha recorded and had but I would recommend this if you have interest in this um, medical medicine history. I don't really know how to describe it, but it was really interesting. Okay, the next book I read was Saving My Assassin by Virginia Prodan. I gave this one four stars, and I think I read this one on my Kindle. This one is one that everyone's kind of been reading lately, and I totally expected it to be something that it wasn't, so I thought it was going to be some kind of thriller. I actually thought that the author was the assassin and that she was saved. That is not what the story is. So, do not go into it thinking that it's actually a story of a Christian attorney in Romania and how she is defending all of these Christians and these churches and of course the Romanian communist government is constantly fighting against her and eventually ends up basically kicking her out of the country but her assassin who was sent to kill her is saved because of her witness to him. So that's the point of the story but it does take up a very small part of the story and it's more just her and her family and how she was fighting against communism um, and this tyranny. I had learned a lot of the stuff that was in here from I Must Betray You by Ruta Sapitis, so I already kind of had an understanding of the communism in Romania, but it was really interesting to see it from a Christian perspective in this book and to see just how terrible it is. And of course the conversions in here were really neat. I didn't like, however, there was a lot of references to God like speaking to her basically, and then her refusal and her acknowledgement of her refusal to really work on her marriage. Like she knew that her marriage was going downhill and you could see it for a long time and she did nothing about it. And then by the end of the book, she just basically says like, yeah, we got divorced, whatever. And that was really sad um, and not very good fruit. But other than that, it was an interesting story if you're into biographies from these communist countries. And then I listened to a very similar book, Passport to Heaven by Micah Wilder. This is the true story of a zealous Mormon missionary who discovers the Jesus he never knew. So another Christian biography. I do not typically read Christian biographies and usually if I'm going to I would want to read more of a historical one but somehow I ended up reading both of these in one month. I did not write a review for this one. I thought I did. I think Goodreads deleted my review. Anyways, I gave this one four stars and 
it's the story of this guy who is a Mormon missionary, and then he is saved um, through just his encounters with a lot of Baptist pastors who were very patient with him and listened and taught him, and then he really wrestles with the scripture, it's, and he becomes saved, and then he ends up talking to his leaders um, in, in the mission and sharing the gospel. There was, like, listening to it at some parts is kind of hard because I think there was like a solid five pages of just Bible verse after Bible verse proving the gospel. And I love how it had a really good emphasis on the fact that it's only by grace that you're saved and that you can't do any works to save you. He repeated that over and over. And that's really, you know, one of the, the big um, problems with Mormonism amongst a lot of other things is that they think that they can do all of these works and that they can be good enough to earn their way into heaven and he really attacks that and I think does a great job of that so I did really enjoy this um, and if you are looking for a modern biography I would recommend that you read this and then a book I actually read in print Christian Counselor's Manual by Jay Adams. I gave this one four stars. I've been reading it for six months um, with a reading group in our church, and I really enjoyed it and learned a lot of really useful things in here. Uh, back in December, I finished the, uh, what was it called? Competent to Counsel. I had read Competent to Counsel back in December, and he actually quotes himself a lot in here and repeats a lot of things, so I didn't love that part. Um, there was a little bit that I disagree with in here, and some parts were just a little bit boring, but there is a lot of good resources and homework and stuff like that that I will be coming back to. So if you are a biblical counselor, I would recommend that you read this just to see a lot of really good examples and homework and all of that. Then I listened to Beneath the Swirling Sky by Carolyn Lilaglo, I think is how you say her name. This is a story about kids or fam a family that can go into paintings. They're called the restorationist and they can fix paintings by basically falling into them. And each one of them has a different like ability that they can do in there. This was a really interesting book, actually. I was quite surprised. I did not expect to like it this much. I gave it four stars. And I really appreciated that even though the adults weren't really involved in the story, it wasn't that the kids were purposely leaving them out. It was just that there were circumstances that prevented the adults from helping. But I appreciated that they weren't like saying that the kids were dumb or that the adults were dumb the whole time because that seems to be a trope in these middle grade books. Also, I really love that there was no romance in here because the main characters are cousins. And you, you know, if you've seen my videos, that if they're like 13, 14 year old, that there's no need for any romance in these books. And that really bothers me. But this one did not have any of that. So I really appreciated that and enjoyed it. The only, I think, content thing I would say is that they do go into a nude painting. And one of the characters does um, have an issue with that, doesn't really want to. And then the girl explains like, oh, it's just art. But I think they handled it really well, and even in the author's note, the author comes back and kind of explains the reasoning behind nude artwork. And also, I really liked how she had a lot of actual facts and historical things in there. She says in the author's note that all of the paintings in the book were actually in the location that they are in real life. So I thought that was really neat. So if you're looking for a book about art, for younger ages or even adults to read and to learn about different paintings. I learned a lot about different paintings. This one specifically is about Van Gogh, but there's Rembrandt in here too and some other paintings. I definitely learned a lot and really enjoyed it, so I would recommend this book. Then I read When Hope Sank by Denise Weimer. This is actually book three in a Day to Remember series, but I have not read any of the other ones, but they are standalone books about historical tragedies, I think only in America. So I had high hopes for this book and I got it from NetGalley as a free arc. However, I only ended up giving it three stars. Um, I wanted it to be this great historical fiction of this dramatic event, kind of like Ruta Sapitas is, but the historical event only took up a couple of pages and then was referred back to, but mostly in the context of the relationship between the characters. So I didn't feel like I learned all these facts about a historical event. I did like the relationship that was in here and I found a lot of the quotes very relatable, which I thought that I highlighted a bunch of quotes, but apparently I didn't. There also was some good Christian content, but there was also some very compromising, unwise situations that I would not have put myself in that the girl was totally fine with putting herself in, even though one of the major like plot points to her character is that she like a guy tried to take advantage of her whenever she was really young and so she doesn't trust people after that but yet she trusts this guy enough to be in some pretty unwise situations with him so I thought that was interesting so yeah 
that's a reference to some of the content that is in there. There are a couple of mentions and even one scene of a guy trying to force himself onto a woman. Nothing happens, but it is kind of a tense situation. There are se several injuries. There is a mention of death in here and a lot of descriptions of Andersonville, the prison during the Civil War, because he comes from there and that is a major part of who he is. And then the last book I read was The Bloodshed Riddle by Rudis DePetis and Steve Shankin. This was probably one of my most anticipated releases for this year. I don't normally look forward to new releases, but these are two of my absolute favorite modern authors. And actually, this book has not been released yet. It won't be released until October, but I got a free copy from NetGalley and was super excited to get this. I gave it five stars. It definitely was more um, middle grade than the other books that I've read by these authors, but it was still really great. And it's really everything that you would want in a historical fiction book. You learn a lot of things, the characters are super relatable, there's a bit of intrigue and adventure, and there's some sweet sibling relationships that are not great in the beginning, but they get um, they get fixed by the end and are really great. The only thing that I really didn't love is that the romance is centered on the younger character who's about 14, even though there's two siblings, one is 14 and one is like 19, I think, but for some reason the main focus of relationships was on the younger kid, which really annoys me because I don't want kids this age reading books like this and um, just having a lot of that exposure. So that was the only thing that was annoying. However, overall, it was clean and there wasn't anything too uncomfortable. And I like how they were really honest about the fact that they did have a crush, but that was the only part that I didn't really like. So I would recommend this book if you're looking for something about the Bletchley circle, whatever it's called, the code breakers during World War II in England, and just how America was involved in that, and Poland, and that was really neat. I love the history in here. So those are the nine books that I read this last month. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And as always, all the links to all the books that I mentioned are in the description down below. These are affiliate links, and it really helps me to keep going on this channel and to keep growing if you guys buy books from those links. So thank you for watching, and I will see you back here next week. Bye!